Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Hope and Help for 2021. It's our way to bring you some of our area's leading experts on all sorts of topics, really news you can use information to help you live your best life and really just start your next chapter, whatever that might be in 2021. When I put this out there asking what your goals were or what you might need help with navigating in the new year, one of the biggies, finances. So who better to tackle that than the crew? We've had them on Newswatch 16 this morning a number of times. The president and CEO of Fidelity Bank, Dan Santanello, along with Jill Valentini, the assistant VP and retail branch manager. Do I have that right? Got it right. <laughs> so you guys both have been in the banking industry for a number of years. You know, one of the biggest questions that people dropped us how and where do you even start when it comes to getting your finances in order for 2021? Again, I'll, Jill, I'll take this and start out. And, you know, again, what I always tell everybody is, is first sit down and really look at, at, at 2020, right, before you start 2021 and, and, and look at your, your expenses for the year. You know, look at what debt obligations you already have carrying into 2021 and, and make a list of those items. And also look at what you've spent and some of those uh, household items, whether it's utilities, uh, whether it's uh, you know gro at the grocery store, and really um, kind of look at those expenses that you really can't avoid going into 2021. Then also look at discretionary spending, and, and you know how much of that discretionary spending uh, do you have, and, and, and have you made in the past? And then secondly, look at you know your income going into 2021, and how much you're going to bring home on your bi on a biweekly basis, like most people get paid, and and try to understand what income flow you have and then really kind of reconciling those. And, and again, trying to really un understand what discretionary dollars you have and make sure that you're always putting away some of those discretionary dollars in a savings account for that rainy day. And uh, again, I think that's really where you start the budgeting process. Um, very simple, but yet uh, it takes some time and some, some thoughtfulness. Jill, anything you wanna to add to what Dan mentioned? I uh, concur 100% with that. I mean, it's New Year resolution time. So you're taking a look at your life, you're setting goals for yourself. So it's a perfect time uh, holistically to look at everything and definitely take a look at your finances. I agree with Dan where you were in the past and where you want to be. And uh, the toughest part is always to rip off the band aid and look at that. So you can't know where you're going until you know where you've been. So it's and how do, you think, how do you think COVID really impacted the way people are looking at their finances, you know, from 2020 leading into 2021? I mean, the game on how much people are earning and what they're bringing home has changed for a lot of folks. So how do you think the whole pandemic really, you know, changed our mindset with all of this? Well, again, I, I look at it, you know, the discretionary dollars is really what changed. You know, what folks in the past have, have been doing a lot of vacations, you know, uh, and, and that obviously changed in 2020. And so I think some of those discretionary dollars and where we spent them has changed and they shifted uh, to, to more local. And, you, you know, we've seen during the pandemic, you know, sporting goods stores running out of kayaks, uh, you know, boat shops, no boats. Um, you go to the home improvement stores, people were spending dollars or discretionary dollars on home improvement. Uh, you know, it, it was really a different spending pattern in 2020 because of COVID. And what we've also seen here at Fidelity Bank is people also had um, highest savings rate in, in, in probably the history of our country. Uh, so those dollars that came in because of less travel uh, and more at home and less going to the restaurants, uh, people had also had saved significant amount of money uh, during the pandemic. We've seen that shift. And this is a question either one of you can jump in on the answer. Obviously, when you say really, as Jill put it, rip off the Band-Aid, really do a deep dive and see what your finances look like and what you need for 2021. What are the free resources or the help that's out there that you've told customers, hey, here's a great place to start to land the plane on the right runway? Jill, I'll let you take that one. So, I mean, in, in the digital age that we're in, you can, and, and I took the liberty last night even to, to look at a couple of apps for budgeting. So, I mean, you can really Google anything and there's a lot of free, safe, great apps out there that you can use to, to start your budgeting, um, which, which are available to anybody. I, I think this year, a lot of clients or a lot of people have had the time to kind of dive into these things. So to get them organized, but even good old fashioned paper and pen and a check register 
can, can assist too. But with the move to digital, there's a ton of available apps out there. Um, but I still say, and you know this, Ryan, your most one of your most important resources is, is your 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 banker, your finance. So you know, I encourage have know your banker. Who go to your representative? They're just as important as your your CPA or your attorney. So you really want to build on that relationship. And and bankers are a wealth of knowledge that they can really help you out with that. So reach out to your to your local banker too. And I think playing off of that, I really feel, as you just mentioned, local bankers are some of the most underutilized people I think that folks go to and turn to because they don't realize like, yeah, if you have a checking account somewhere, I mean, these are people actually can walk in and say, who's really good at this? Can you point me in this direction for a budget, right? Like, I mean, the resources are actually there free for your clients. Well, absolutely. And, you know, think about it. if you go to your, your, your community bank and you talk to your banker, um, they, they have your whole financial profile in front of them simply by looking at your checking account, looking at the history of how you spend those dollars and really can work very closely with you on, a, on a helping you build a budget. I mean, they have all the resources in front of them to help you. And while, you know, 2020, as Dan pointed out, you know, for some people, it was actually a good year when it came to saving, maybe not taking that overseas trip and putting more money in the bank. But a number of folks really struggled losing their job. And, you know, that leads to credit card debt. So both of you can jump in on this. When it comes to approaching credit card debt, where do you start, especially if you feel like you are in so deep, really just to survive and put food on the table for your family in 2020? So it's a, a kind of a necessary evil, credit cards, whether pandemic or not, but even more so. So there's multiple ways to um, approach that. And one of the main things that I usually advise a lot of clients is to, as much as you can, attempt to take your lowest balanced credit card and start really paying more than the minimum payment on that. Once you get that uh, balance paid off on your lowest outstanding balance, you have a sense of accomplishment mm -hmm. that'll help you feel good about yourself. And then you can start to work through your other credit cards going in order of balance. So that's really helped a lot of clients in, the, in that aspect. You can also take a look at, you know, your home it is your, your number one most valuable, uh, important asset that you own. And there may be some equity in there that you can reach out through your bank and see if there's a way you can try to consolidate that or refinance using the equity in your home that can kind of lesser those monthly payments for you and definitely save you a lot on interest. And when it comes to just the debt in general, right? So if people hear this and they try to do that deep dive into what they have in their house, but you know, you're still maybe fifty, eighty thousand dollars in the hole. Maybe it was a, you know a terrible year, and you really dug yourself deep. Maybe over the past few years, talk about bankruptcy. What do people need to know about it? Who do they talk to on making that decision? What are the the positives of it? I guess when it comes to getting rid of that debt, and what are some of the negatives? Yeah, well, you know, what we tell folks, you know, really they should consult with with, with their attorneys on on bankruptcy, and, and it really is is. Uh, different approaches to bankruptcy. Uh, again, as you point out, you can have some debt uh, forgiven. Um, you can also work to restructure your debt with, with your with your banks or your financial institutions. It, it, uh, and the restructuring approach allows you to maintain your, your a better credit score and allows you to be able to borrow in the future um, if in fact you go that route. But sometimes that doesn't work for folks. I mean, again, if you lost your job or unfortunately you had a, a, a incident where you're healthy, you can't work, uh, and you have this debt. And sometimes you do have to uh, just go to and, and file for forgiveness on some of this debt. Um, unfortunately, it does stick with you for a while, and it will prevent you from getting uh, some some future loans if you need it. If you're, again, if you're, if you're purchasing a home, an automobile, it makes it difficult, uh, not unsurmountable, but typically you'll be paying a much higher interest rate. And uh, it obviously, with a higher interest rate, it'll cost you more money to make that purchase. Uh, so it's one of those things you got to think out very carefully. Uh, and again, the attorneys, there's attorneys out there that specialize in bankruptcy that can help you walk through that process. So it's really about obviously weighing your options. I'm going to get more back on track with houses and mortgages in a moment. But, but I think really, you know, when you talk about COVID and the pandemic and banking in general, 
give us a glimpse of what happened behind the scenes maybe that we don't know about. Did you guys see a spike in people buying their first homes or their first new car that they were coming to local banks like yours and others in the area uh, for money? Like what happened? A lot, <laughs> a lot <laughs> happened. It's been a, a, a very, a, and believe me, at, at Fidelity Bank and community banks, we feel uh, very blessed to be able to help out our community partners. So we, we have seen with the impact of the low interest rates for home loans and mortgages, a lot of refinancing and a lot of restructuring for that as well. But we're also proud that we were able to participate and be a part of the SBA PPP forgiveness. So we've really um, not only in that way assisted our, our local community business persons, but also reached out to some clients who may have been struggling with something. So we've been very active. It's been a very um, rewarding and fulfilling year for me personally as a banker, because even if it's just supporting buying lunch for, for the bankers here or, or sending, you know, lunch over to some of our healthcare workers, um, we really have been busy and been able to be an integral part of the community, helping not only financial, mostly financially, but knowing that we're their community partners. So it, it's been a very productive, busy year for us, a very rewarding year in the sadness, if you could, if you could say, of the pandemic. Yeah, no, and I, I concur with what Jill said. You know, in in March of, of 2020, when the you know we first went down into our into lockdown. I, we were all not sure what what to expect, right? Again, um, we expect the bottom to fall out financially, and and the interest rates coming down significantly and to an all time low. I mean, today you can get a, a thirty year mortgage uh, less than three percent, and so what it what it really did was was sent a lot of folks out there uh, purchasing homes, and I think for the first time in many many years, northeastern Pennsylvania has seen a six percent appreciation in home prices. And if you talk to some of these realtors, um, they will tell you uh, their inventory is extremely low. And that's because of the, the, the interest rates and the affordability of a home today is much different than it was pre pandemic. And uh, so one of the things the low interest rate environment did was spur a lot of home ownership, which was a good thing. And speaking of those home interest rates, you know, we did a segment with you guys over the summertime about refinancing and how deals were hot. Now's the time to strike. You even motivated me to refinance my mortgage. So if people want to go about that, can you walk us through the process and kind of simplify it? Like, how do you start? How do you know if your interest rate's not that great? And how do you start exploring it to really get the best bang for your buck, no matter where you bank? Yeah. So, so general rule of thumb used to be, and I, I can tell you it shifted. It used to be if, if rates come down 1%, you should refinance. But I can tell you that that is not, the, does not hold true today uh, because of the cost of home ownership has, has grown so significantly. Uh, and so really the best thing to do is really sit, uh, put a call into your banker, uh, ask them about the interest rates, find out where your interest rates currently at and, and have them walk you through the process and saying, okay, how much is my payment? What's the cost to refinance? And if I include that in my mortgage, which, which some folks have the ability to do, uh, you know, how much will I save? Because uh, at the end of the day, for the most part, today it's about cash flow and how do I improve my cash flow? And at the same time, maybe accelerate the payoff of my home. But, but we have bankers here at Fidelity that solely, all they do is work on, on home mortgages. And so they've got a lot of expertise, a lot of tools at their disposal that they can help the consumer walk through that process. Uh, but I can tell you, if you haven't uh, refinanced during this, you know, this pandemic, um, you, you probably uh, would be worth it today. Again, as I mentioned earlier, a 30-year mortgage under 3% uh, and a 15-year mortgage today is 2.375. I've been in banking for now almost 30 years, and I've never seen rates this low. Wow. And I guess coming back to what you guys were talking about, going to see an expert, you know, Jill, can you expand upon maybe even just home equity loans, what the deals are with that, how they work. I mean, I actually remember calling you and picking your brain. I had some school loans, you know, from finishing my PhD and you're like, hey, maybe you should visit this option. Why might that be something for people to consider, Jill or Dan, if you want to weigh in on this? Because if folks still can't go on vacation for the next few months, depending on which way the pandemic goes, uh, they might be socking some money into renovating their home or paying off student debt. 
Absolutely. And uh, the, the home equity loans are a great option for that as long as you do have the equity in your home to do that. So they're very similar to a mortgage. Um, the only the biggest difference I would say is that it's not 100 percent financing on that as you would typically on a mortgage. But the benefits to that is that instead of paying high credit card interest rate or high student loan rate um, debt where you may be paying seven, eight, nine percent on that credit cards debt, I've seen up to 33, 34, 35 percent. If you did have the equity in your home to do that, you can consolidate that into a home equity loan and your rate may be as low as, you know, the Ford mentioned two, two and a half to three, four percent. So you're saving a lot of money on interest. You're um, improving your cash flow with your monthly payments being lower. And uh, it's just an overall, it'll appease that uh, burden of the cash flow, the monthly payments, freeing up some funds for you. And you know your money is going mostly to the principal and not to interest. Dan, anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, no, Jill did a great job explaining it. You know, the only thing I would add to is you know, one of the benefits of a home equity loan, typically your financial institutions offer no closing costs. Right? So, so you don't have to pay for title insurance. Um, there, there's any of those costs that associate it with a mortgage. Uh, typically, you don't have to pay. So the cost to get into that home equity is much lower. Uh, typically, you'll pay a little bit higher interest rate because of that. But again, this is where a financial expert can help you walk through the benefits of, of doing a mortgage versus a home equity. One other thing I wanted to touch on, Dan mentioned obviously something we've experienced all over Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania, right? Low inventory on houses because they're selling like hotcakes. Um, a number of realtors said that even during the pandemic. I guess the question is car sales, right? There's been national headlines on used car sales. You can't get a used car. It's, it's tough to find that when it comes to the inventory as well. Are you, do you think there are better deals with local banks to take out like car loans, um, whether new or used right now, or what are you finding in that element? Yeah, again, I, I, I think yes, the answer to that question is yes. I mean, today, um, automobile financing is very affordable. Um, again, interest rates being as low as they are. Uh, and you know, typically people are gonna, again, are gonna look and say, hey, what is my cost monthly payment to get into that car? And I can tell you, you know, we do a lot of business with some dealerships and uh, they've seen a very boom time. I mean, they've been selling a lot of vehicles. Uh, again, I think, you know, stimulus money as it has been, been uh, given out to, to consumers, they're using those dollars and leveraging them to buy cars. Jill, anything else you wanna add on that element? Uh, I concur with what Dan said 100%. And as always, even if you are car shopping and getting some rates from some local dealership, you might always want to touch base with your banker to see, you know, if, if you can get a better rate on that. So you want to make sure you're being savvy and, you know, have that banker in your tool belt just so that, you know, they have the knowledge and the, and the tools to be able to help guide you make those decisions. Great point. And just a few final thoughts before we wrap this up. January is Financial Wellness Month. So is there anything we didn't touch on that you feel in your you know, decades of banking experience that now's the time to strike on this? Obviously, you mentioned refinancing, but anything else you want to tackle that should really be on our radar if getting your finances in order for 2021 is your goal in the new year? Joel, I'll let you take this first. So um, again, I just echo what we, we've said initially, you know, it's a fresh new year. And I think after coming out of the year of the pandemic, we're all looking to take inventory and take stock, um, whether that be getting well physically, um, you know, maybe food and diet, maybe we want to try something new. Um, now's the time, definitely, especially at the fresh start at the beginning of the year. You want to, it's like making your bed in the morning. You want to hit the year off running well. So I just encourage everybody to, to take that, that dive into your finances and, and try to make small steps so that you feel rewarded and you can continue to do that and build good habits. Yeah. Yeah, and the only thing I'd add to that, and Jill hit on it pretty strongly early, is is really took it, take a look, you know, catalog all your debt, understand where, where your dollars are going, and, and commit to reducing that that debt. And, and as Jill said, take your your small balance, high interest rates, which are typically your credit card debt, start paying extra on those. Um, talk to your banker, see if there's an opportunity to get lower interest rates on your on your homes, on your automobiles. I mean, again, we have a historical low interest rate environment, and I, I encourage everyone just to take advantage of that. And again, just make a commitment to reducing that overall debt burden that you have. And 
2021 will be a good year for you. And then on the final note, do you have any inside scoop? I mean, is it is now the time to strike? Because do you foresee maybe by summer things maybe might not be as good with interest rates? Yeah, I would tell you, I would, I would, wouldn't wait. You know, I think time always works against you. But uh, the Feds are, are predicting low interest rate environments for the next few years. But again, the sooner you take advantage of the low interest rate environment, the better it is for you. All right. Well, Dan Santanello and Jill Valentini from Fidelity Bank, thanks so much, as always, for your expertise, helping us get the best bang for our buck, no matter if we're refinancing our homes or trying to snag some new wheels. So thanks again for your time and your help. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.